welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Hey, everybody, it's me, Todd Novak. Welcome to the Guitar Knobs podcast. We're thrilled to death that you are <laughs> listening to our little show right out of Columbus, Ohio. That's right. Here we go. Uh, we've got a really good one for you this week. We have um, somebody who's pretty good at building things, or at least that's what I'm told. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, is a return. Is it, we got, we got a boomerang, boomerang guest, uh, guest. Who are you? I'm Christopher Benson. Don't call me a boomer. I just, <laughs> I, I just do boomer bends yeah. constantly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Chris Benson of Benson Amps. Uh, Tony's going to look up when we, uh, w- I have that information. You have that information? At my fingertips. Yes. Because I contacted our librarian earlier. Excellent. Pre-podcast. The records department. Yes, in the records department. Yes. And I show yeah, Chris's fill first, out a triplicate for that first one. appearance was episode number 59. Golly. So on it, September 21st, 2017. That's bananas. Almost f- seven years to the date. That is crazy. So, Chris, we've mentioned this actually a couple times on recent shows where we're where somebody gets pulled up from the archives for, as a reference and I, honestly I'm I just want to say thank you for, for back then giving us the time of day because <laughs> we, honestly like we were just cutting our teeth and um well was, I was already a seasoned professional you, yes yes <laughs> but I just remember going oh my gosh I can't believe that I can't believe he's going to do this <laughs> I, he was I, giddy for a week. Yeah. I had an amp company that was five years old at that point. I think you guys might be overselling who I was in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, I think the announcement that you made was that you were, you were about to discontinue the, the pillowcase um, uh, line or, you know, the, the treatment. Oh yeah. Um, I remember I, that stuck in my head for some reason. Um so anyways, I, I publicly just want to say a huge thank you because, you know, that probably that definitely helped get us, you know, get us moving. That was some octane in our tank for sure. Oh, yeah. So yeah, my uh, pleasure. Thank thanks you for, for that. Thanks for having me. I, that might have been the first podcast I've uh, on, to be honest with you. Really? I think wow. so. Wow. No, maybe, maybe I did one with uh, Blake from Tone Mob before that, but. They're probably both equally probably. terrible on my end. <laughs> 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 well, we got you here again because, well, we haven't talked to you in a long time and you've done an awful lot since we have. Don't worry, we're not going to do like, so tell us what you did since 2017. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing the last seven years? <laughs> yeah. um, but we are going to find out what you've been up to this year and maybe what we can look forward to. As well as you've got a very special event coming up, so we're gonna, you're going to tell us all about that. Um, and for right now, we just need to make uh, two quick announcements and then uh, get into our what's going on in our music world this week. So here we go. Uh, just two quick announcements. Um, number one, if you didn't see the Instagram yes post of me acting like a complete idiot i thought you were trying out for the u.s break dancing team yeah, i got a couple comments like that actually <laughs> um but uh i i do have the absolute privilege uh of going to see oasis at wembley mm-hmm. uh in on their last show ever <laughs> maybe ever <laughs> although maybe every show is their last year who knows uh i just hope they don't pull the jane's addiction uh. um, but but the uh, maybe even as good as that is i get to hang out with joe halliday from hello sailor hello sailor the whole week and we've already started planning what we're gonna we're gonna go see a chelsea game nice we're gonna have a big gear meetup nice oh i'm so i'm just oh, that's absolutely beyond yeah his wife stayed on the phone for like 72 hours oh just trying to get or, or just, she was trying for 72 hours to get tickets that's what he told me i don't know if that was wow. a made-up number or not but let's say it's not 72 hours a long time yeah and uh and we got him and that he so he's going for his 40th birthday huh. uh and uh i'm just i'm just so 
I'm beyond excited about this. Oh, that's nice. And that's uh, in, is that in September? That's next September. Okay. Yeah. So um, anyways, so we got that. And then also, you know, kind of a big deal uh, with one of our frequent flyers on the show. Uh, we have a, a new announcement from Copper Sound. Hmm. They just released uh, a new line. You know, they're, Alex is so good about saying, Hey, cool. The shop is going where we are right now. He's always thinking ahead. And I really respect that. Um, and then when he does, he doesn't do it like, you know, kind of slapdash and just try to get out as fast as he can. So, you know, somebody else doesn't take an idea or something. Um, their stuff is super good, fantastic quality and, and they're real people and they're nice guys. So buy stuff from them. But this is a DIY pedal kit. Oh. So, you know, the last time they were on, we talked about the DIY, the breadboarding and all the little bits for slightly more experienced people. Maybe I remember that this is like, I just want to put a pedal together. I don't want to have to do the breadboarding or any kind of math or whatever. Um, and so now they offer a silicon fuzz kit, a single transistor overdrive kit and a hard clip distortion kit. Hmm. And each of these is under a hundred dollars. And, and you got all the, you've got all the components that they use on all the other pedals. So like, this is great quality. You just got to put it together and have some fun. Nice. So these, um, I believe are available. I think they're available right now. I'm trying to look at the, yes. Uh, the launch date was launch Friday, the, Friday 13th. the 13th. That's right. So go to copper sound pedals and you can get, one of these pedals, go home and build it. Have some fun building it. If you've never built a pedal before, holy mackerel, this is a golden opportunity because you're going you're gonna to have something that's put together very well with great components, and you know it's going to sound excellent. And you can improve your soldering kit. You can, and your soul. And your soul. Yes. I like that. Uh, so th heads up. Thanks a lot for uh, – to, to – Alex from Copper Sound to for putting all this all together for everybody and uh, let's see what happens to see what else they make. Mm. Okay, what's going on in your music world this week? Tony Baloney hit us, then we're going to check in with Chris Benson. So I have been perusing some of the cool stuff coming through the internets, and um, I'm kind of I think I'm excited about this. Okay. Um, so Gibson has re-released re oh, yes. the Les Paul Studio. The one. The one. Now, I don't know if it's the one, but I've always been a fan of the studio line. Um, for those who don't know, a Les Paul Studio was always kind of a bare bones uh, yeah. Les Paul. No binding on the on the outside. Yeah, dot inlay. Yeah, plain maple top. Um and this one is kind of cool. They stopped making them for a Limited number of colors years. Limited colors, too. White, black, uh, the bur burgundy, whatever yeah, that's Yeah, wine called. red, yeah. Wine red, and I think that was it. Yeah, well, they've come out. This this new line has a, a bunch of different colors, some cool colors. Um, they did a, a real nice sunburst, mm -hmm. and there's a blue burst. Uh, there's a wine red. Mm -hmm. um, I had one of those. That was one of my first guitars, yeah. 1984. Yeah, I mean, you can't the, – the, they were very good guitars of the day. Now, they have made some improvements. They've chambered the, the mahogany, so it's a little bit lighter, Yeah, which is nice. And, I mean, I, I always kind of liked the look of the unbound kind of thing. It just looked – It was a little bit more modern looking. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. But in uh, in addition to that, so those are gonna uh, looks like they're running anywhere from fifteen ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine, which is about a grand less than a standard. I got mine for three hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there was a, there was a time, yeah, when you could get a studio yeah. for next to nothing. Chris, did you ever own a uh, Les Paul Studio? Um, I actually own a Les Paul Studio, but aha, a, there you uh, go. It's got one of those Evertune bridges on it. Oh I don't yeah, know if you guys know what that that's is. that's kind of a yeah. I'm I'm very familiar with those. Our our friend Sean at uh, Guitar Repair Company has has done a couple of installs of those, and they're just like monstrous to try to install on a guitar. Uh, I, lots of lots of lots of routing templates. 
Oh yeah, I, I use it for design because you know it. You don't you don't have to tune. You just pick it up and go. Um, yeah. And you know, and anything to to not distract me from what I'm what I'm doing. But I've actually played a couple shows with it and did not bring a tuner, which was pretty fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, they when the, when they're installed right and set up right, there is. I, I'm told that there is they're second to none. Yeah. So. But um, as part of this article, <laughs> as I scroll down to the bottom, there's a couple of other models coming out, one of which is a reissue of the Gibson Victory. And a couple episodes ago, we talked about in my fever dream but with Joe Bonamassa giving me a guitar and he handed me uh, something that looked like a, like a uh, Gibson Victory, uh, but had PV on the headstock. Uh. <laughs> um i'm not so sure well you know i guess there's a shoe for every foot as they say um it's kind of a their take on a you know a, an offset mm, strati with a longer horn and and it's uh the one thing they did do on the reissue is they put the hockey stick head stock on which is an improvement over what was on the original um, and those are you now for some reason those are going anywhere from 19.99 to 24.99. I you know we'll see. These could be the next Gibson collector item. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm glad that they're at least Gibson is revisiting um, you know some of the models that they had in the past models yeah. that maybe did well. Some of these maybe didn't do so well, but, um, it's, it's just, it's kind of cool. And, and, you know, I was more excited about the studio, but you know, this, uh, the victory, who knows that, that could certainly foot the bill for somebody. It's, it's definitely, here's the thing. There is a guitar for everybody out there. Yeah. You know, uh, well, I was at Chase's shop and you know, he's like, Oh, you know, we got these in blah, 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 blah. And it, the, he sort of co-owns a space with uh with a music shop downtown that actually has like brand new guitars that you know of various names um and so we're just kind of standing around looking at stuff and we started commenting on him and then we we both kind of said somebody is going to walk in here and say oh my gosh that's the guitar of my dreams and that's cool maybe not everybody's dreams but somebody's but dreams. somebody's dream yes there you go Somebody's fever dream. Yes. Um, so that's all I got to report this week. Okay. Well, well done. Well done. Uh, Chris, how about you? What's going on in your music world this week? Um, let's see. I was, I'm just going to be trying to edit a video that I shot very poorly um, in Nashville this past weekend. Uh, we did a release video with David Torn. Um, I don't know if you guys know who that is. He's a big, big effects guy. Um, he's like a pretty old guy who did, uh, he played guitar for David Bowie and was kind of an artist in his own right. And we're doing a pedal with him. Ah, cool. So, oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And I'm going to be isolating cause I, he just told me he got COVID today. So I'm basically oh boy living up, living in my studio <laughs> for the next few days until <laughs> we see how that shakes out. Um, which is it good. says, uh, it, it, it yeah, it, it, when you look it up, it says he's a, also known as splatter cell, uh, is a composer textualist. I don't know. What's a textualist. <clears throat> um, he does Do you know what that? ambient music, but kind of ambient music. If like a chainsaw did ambient music, it's, uh, <laughs> it can be gotcha. really beautiful, <laughs> but really aggressive. And really dissonant, but sometimes really beautiful. Like he's just kind of all over the map with it. Sure. Um, and Soundscape he, kind of fella. Yeah. But he's also like a guy who all the uh, really fancy fuzz builders send uh, fuzzes to to try out because he's kind of a, a fuzz connoisseur. And he, uh, we're going to do a signature fuzz with him that, because I, I think I make his favorite fuzz. Oh, wow. Um, Fantastic. So we're just doing like a tweaked version of our stonk box uh, for 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 David Torn, and I, I went into that and made it way crazier for him. So nice, yeah. 
Yeah, interesting guy. Uh, when's that coming out? I think that pedal is going to be coming out um, in the next few weeks. Wow. Okay. Yep. So I gotta moving on it. Hurry and you know fix my crappy video <laughs> before before that <laughs> happens. Got it. Got it. Um, well, uh, as for me, I hey, how about you, Todd? Oh, thanks. I was tinkering around with uh, uh, trying to get delays. I got a handful of delays that I'm trying to um, do very, very specific things. Um, trying to get a very tight plate. Uh, trying to um, not a plate. Sorry, uh, slap back. Sorry. And uh, uh, I was also working with some plate reverb, so that's why I got confused myself. You're very confused. Yeah. And then um, and then also something that felt that could get me to a delay space that didn't sound like I had a delay pedal on. So I was just kind of pulling them off the shelf and putting them in front of each other. It's, you know, it's just, it's fun to do that. If you don't have anything better to do and you're watching TV, just like close your eyes, go pick a couple pedals off your shelf and, and try to get them to do things that maybe they're not totally designed to do. Um, so yeah, it was the, the two that I kind of were at the end getting to where I wanted them to was the Demi dash T one twenty, Um, and, uh, the the sketchy sounds um tapes uh so it was, yeah just kind of fun because i'm not i don't typically do like a lot of delay in my stuff but i'm looking to do that for a bit now so fun times there you go fun times a lot of standing up a lot of bending over a lot of standing up a lot of bending over tweak 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 blow your ears out and then go eat some dinner that sounds like a song. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Well, anyways, speaking of pedals, you know what? how the best way to get these all working together, you know what I'm going to tell you, Tony, is Tour Gear Designs patch cables. Ah, uh, Tour Gear Designs patch cables. I'm very familiar with yes, these guys. Yes, they are all, they're like, you know, like if I was a five-year-old and I had Legos on my floor, yep. this is like... All the red pieces. Uh, this is uh, adult Legos, <laughs> I guess. They're just, just all over the floor because I'm constantly don't, swiping out don't pedals. Don't step on them. Or vacuum them. Don't but do you that. know, you could probably step on Tour Gear Design patch cables and not hurt your foot. I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, built extremely well. Built extremely affordable. Yes. Go to TourGearDesigns.com, load up your basket, and don't forget to put in the guitar knobs and you're going to save 10 per, uh, sorry 15% 15% yep yep that kind of savings you might go back after you plug that in if, and add more stuff to your cart if you're right in the head you will <laughs> all right thank you to tour gear designs for sponsoring our four on the floor tony me do be this excellent one two one two three four on the floor all right chris benson what is your four on the floor part do? Um, let's see. The first is a volume pedal called, uh, it's, it's called the Talonix volume pedal. And, uh, it's, I think it might be the nicest one out there. It's certainly the most expensive. Um, but it's like, it's made by this, uh, I think they're a geographical survey company, but the owner, um, does pedal steel guitar and he it's like made out of billet aluminum like carved it has like a bunch of different tapers yeah. it's just really nice um That's cool I, that, man. i'm looking at it right now it's the multi-taper hmm. yep yep uh really really cool company they also make like weird speakers uh for pedal steel as well the next is probably the slow loris from non-human audio Mm. Um, uh, they recently on the show the old non-human audio. Oh yeah. So looking at the at oh, wait, the uh, at the We're going uh, back to the multi taper. Oh, hold on. <laughs> looking at the description here, so it it's not a pot. It doesn't use light or an LED or a string. Um, but it's it measures the angular position. Is that wow? That sounds interesting. So it's got like a. Uh, 
Oh shoot! What's that called? The the thing that a micrometer? No, the you know the, <laughs> the, the thing that it's, it's a gyroscope. A gyroscope? No, it doesn't have a gyroscope in it. It doesn't. It should. That would be cool if it had a gyroscope <laughs> in it. So yeah, that's that's interesting because you know I, I've 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 always liked the the optical ones um, because I've had well I've had one or two crap out that are you know using like standard pots inside. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and or the string breaks or something like that. So yeah, that's kind of cool. I, I'm gonna have to check that one out. Yeah, the the guy. I think the guy did it mostly just to talk to people about gear. Because after I ordered it, he called me. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh yeah, uh, are you Chris Benson? Benson Amps? Like, yep, I've never played your stuff. And uh, so I started asking him about the technology because I was like, how 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 are you doing this exactly? And I'm a, I'm in a position to understand, and he was he got real cagey about it. I, I was just asking to be uh, nice, but he was like, "Well, you know, <laughs> um, I can't tell you. I I didn't. I can any, tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Yeah, I, I I can I can't tell you anything more than the website says, unfortunately. But yeah. I do love it. It works hmm. very well, and it's very well built. So. It's it's very interesting because I mean we're at the website and it says quality electronics for wildlife <laughs> and mm -hmm. environmental research and specific applications. Yeah, he's a scientist. Uh, if you go under the products, it says wildlife, VHS, VHF receivers, oceanography, and pro audio. Let's see the wildlife <laughs> up there. It's <laughs> what do we have? A picture of a of, of like the, the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Huh. Oh, wait, no, it goes. In, oh, it's wildlife tracking. Uh, OK, so, wow. This is like, well, yeah, you're going to you're going to get lost if you go there. <laughs> and oceanography equally the same. So anyways, if you want a volume pedal, that's really crazy. <laughs> and Pro and audio. recommended by none other than Mr. Chris Benson, then that's the place to go. Talonics, T-E-L-O-N-I-C-S. Nice. What's it, number two? It might two? have a tracking device in it. <laughs> I'm thinking it probably does. Yeah, it could. I mean, what do you I have feel like I would two? put one in if I had the means, just to see, you know, where it went. <laughs> <laughs> up and down and up and down. And <laughs> so, direct market uh, research. Yes. Oh, my. What's next? Slow Loras. Um, we, I use that or me and Dave used that as a basis for one of my puddles um, called the Florist that came out a couple a couple months ago. Uh, and I just really love what right. that thing does. What is the specific, can you be any more specific about what you, because it does kind of very specific things. And I think it, people are either going to get it or maybe not get it. Yeah. So it's like a slapback. Um, but the slapback time changes with kind of your guitar pick attack. So when you uh -huh. hit the note, it kind of goes boom. Um, like it slows down, then comes back up, up to pitch is, is kind of the effect. Um, and it sounds really cool in front of like fuzz or after fuzz. Um, it's a good, good way to make like riffs sound wider uh and more more interesting mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. just a really really cool pedal yeah. I, I loved it as soon as i heard it yeah i you know when it says a slow loris and what i personally found was to your point like you know if you're doing a riff or, or is like actually slower ones worked a little bit better for me than like a, a faster one because you get i think that effect is a little bit more pronounced but that's my own, you know. Mm. That's just you. <laughs> we tried to make it a little bit, uh, have a wider range of use with the florist, but it just ended up sounding different, like a completely different pedal, which is also cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, slow loris. It's awesome. Check it All out. All right. But, and also, everybody, check out the florist from yeah. Benson. Florist is pretty, pretty neat, neato as well. I guess, am I doing the next one? Yeah. Yeah, why not? The R2R Treble Booster. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. I've got one. Is this the amp top or the pedal board version? I, I would do the pedal board version just 
because um, I, I would probably knock the amp top version off pretty quickly. Pretty clumsy. That's, that's actually why I got the Everton bridge. There you go. You can actually use uh, some drywall screws to screw it into the top of the amplifier, and it works great. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last, I don't know if, well, I guess it has a foot switch, um, so hopefully it qualifies, but I'd probably use an Echoplex EP3 uh, tape echo. Okay, okay. With, with, a, with a foot switch. The old Echoplex EP3 with the foot switch in the library mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> uh okay i mean that sounds like a pretty great four on the floor f for me i like it the volume pedal is a uh, that's, you know, that's i'm gonna have that's to check very that. interesting i want to check that one out yeah i'm totally down with the i might the get one of those that... tracking things for you though todd <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um all right well thanks so much for doing your second four on the floor with us chris now um I think maybe most immediate and probably because it's, uh, you know, most contained, there's something really big going on coming up very, very soon, which is why we tried to jam you into this week. Uh, why don't you tell us about your big event? Yeah, I, I hope it's really big. We've never done it before. It could be very small. We'll see. Um, but we're doing a kind of pedal, I guess people have been calling it like an expo or a market or you know something like that it's basically an event in portland a carnival a car <laughs> yeah yeah it's maybe just an event um so we invited a bunch of companies to come and join up with us at hollowed halls which is this recording studio event space in portland and they're bringing a bunch of pedals to sell and they're bringing a bunch of pedal nerds to sell them uh, that people can come and talk to and it'll just kind of be like a a party there's going to be food and i think that's happening on the 28th of september and we're we're calling it benson fest uh actually we we were calling it benson fest as a joke my employees were calling it benson fest just to bother me because i was just like i don't know if it's <laughs> not but you know, it ended up being called Benson Fest, so here, here we are. I'm owning it. <laughs> you got, you got to make the cachet work for you, baby. Next year, it's a Benson Carnival. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> or, Carnival of sound. And then in a couple more years, you can do the Benz Olympics. <laughs> Dude, I'm looking forward or, to it. Or not. This is, uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, Benz Olympic. Benz Olympics. This is like a drug. Benz Olympic. <laughs> Make it happen. Like yes. a yes. prescription medication. Yes. It makes you grow a mustache and sideburns and uh, whatever else. Just It just grows hair. We'll just say that. Go with it. Uh, so how many, you said you got a, a lot of companies, were we talking 10, 20, 50? I think we got about 100. 20 vendors. Oh, nice. Um, That's very respectful. Yeah. yeah more more well, than I thought. And that's also a really great way. I mean, I realize you have all of, you know, those vendors there, but, um, you know, I, you have a beloved amp brand clearly. And what a great way for people to connect with Benson, uh, you know, at all. Uh, uh, you know, in a, in a more familiar way, maybe I, I, I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. We're, we're, we're definitely looking forward to, to it and seeing a bunch of buds and I mean, nothing like this has ha really happened to Portland in a few years and we figured it was time and we're, we've been kind of looking around, like waiting for someone to do it. We're like, all right, we'll just, I guess, I guess we got to do it. <laughs> So. <laughs> it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Yes. The best way That's to right. get everybody to do that is to not overhype it. I mean, it's somewhat true. Yeah. When things are overhyped, you just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now it, it starts to, it's kind of like, you know, when somebody say, have, Hey, have you watched that show that I told you about three times last week? No, I haven't. And now I'm not going to doggone it. Stop telling me about it. Hmm. 
Yeah. Is that what you do with all of my suggestions? No, no. I'm not saying that. Me. No, not you. Much. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, that's I'm that sounds like a height. really good All time. I'll say is you should come, you should come and have fun. Have fun at Benson Fest. There you go. Have fun at Benson Fest. That's the T-shirt. Yes, yes. Can you get Fred Armis in there? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think he lives here anymore. <laughs> no, I don't think he does. Oh. But For- he listens to the show, so he might show up if. Does like, he really? It's quite possible. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Fred, if you're listening, <laughs> get out there. Come on. Go back to Portland. No, and then come here. And then come here. Yeah. And then when he walks in, we'll <laughs> Yeah. Anyways. Uh, so, okay. So that's happening. Is, is that throwing a big wrench in your actual daily works? Uh, I mean, we, we've had some, you know, complaints from employees about, <laughs> the added workload, but I think they're exaggerating. It's it's honestly not going to be too bad. I think we, we might lose like half of a day of work and it's going to be really fun. So totally oh. worth it. But you said, I think when we were talking over uh, email, you said that there was going to be a dunk tank <laughs> uh, where you're going to be sat um, for half the day and that the other half the day is a kissing booth. Nah. <laughs> now, are you were you just pulling my leg on that, or? Well, I mean, we're not saying there's not going to be a kissing booth, um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't get me wrong. That's there. Okay, there's going to be a kissing. Booth. Come, come and come and enjoy the kissing booth. <laughs> ah, perfect. Yeah. We got them nailed down. Yes. Mark your calendars, everyone. <laughs> kissing booth surprise guest Tony. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. Mwah. Mwah. Uh, so, okay. So that's happening. We got that. We got that taken care of now. I think we're going to put um, Jack DeVille on the kissing obviously booth. Obviously you there. Sorry. Oh, yeah. perfect. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so we got the, the Benson Fest locked down and now everybody on earth knows about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, a, or, a, significant, some, a significant portion of the world population. Yes. yes. Um, but, you know, it's been a minute since you've been on. It, can you give us sort of just a, an update of where you are at right now with Benson? And uh, maybe what we can look forward to, uh, you know, what do you got in the works? Yeah, sure. Um, we, since we talked in 2017, we've just kind of kept growing and <laughs> growing and growing and growing and growing. So now, now yes. we have like pretty big yes. operation in Portland, which is, you know, I, I wake up in a cold sweat constantly. It's... Yeah, we've got like twenty people. You just crazy. bought some new, like a new. You got you got a new place, right? Yeah. Well, we we moved into a warehouse um, for part of the business, and then we. And that, I'm actually in the attic of that warehouse, which is where kind of like studio spot is. And then we have like a commercially zoned house in uh, Southeast Portland, where people do wiring and puddles, and then we have like a wood shop in my barn in my backyard as well so three three different spots um with way too many people wow yeah so it's it's pretty pretty big <laughs> and i have like managers and people kind of overseeing everything now so it, it kind of gives me a lot more time to sit there and come up with sounds and design stuff and write emails so right yeah and you, <laughs> the emails yes <laughs> the emails <laughs> so many emails um things are going really well uh, we our pedal line has grown a lot. I think we only had the preamp pedal out in 2017, if that. Um, I think yeah. You know, it was you were. I think you were teasing it. Yeah, that that sounds about right. So we that that pedal went went pretty well. We we sold a bunch of those puppies and um, did the germanium fuzz thing with the, the thermal bias uh, in 2020. A few more glass puddles. We did the delay last year. We did the Floris puddle uh, a couple months ago, which was our first modulation puddle. Mm-hmm. Um, 
we haven't really done that many amps um, just because people keep buying the Monarch over and over again. Um, and I think we're about to, I, I'm, I've actually been working really hard on a couple new reverb units. Oh, interesting. Um, and one of them actually does have tremolo. Now, are these going to be like uh, amp top or? Yeah, amp top. So, you know, sits on top of the amp and does the reverb. And <clears throat> one of them is, we did kind of a larger format one. It's going to have tremolo uh, and harmonic tremolo switchable. Oh, really? Yeah. It'll have a foot switch. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's, it's two. <laughs> it's a it's a all tube unit. So got it. Okay, got it. Uh, amp style tremolo in it. Excellent. And yeah, that's just it's 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 hard to believe. I think when you were on last, I uh, I think you only had just a couple employees at that point. Yeah, that sounds about right. I probably have like five or something. What that's that's tremendous, tremendous growth. That's man, so cool. You got all kinds of great products out there, um, and you've also created a name that you know uh, you you could put out something that basically makes no sound, and people would be like, "Yeah, but it's a Benson." That's a good thing uh, to have for a brand, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that that you make trivial things. Yeah, some some would argue that's no, exactly what that. We do. That's hard to that's hard to cultivate in a brand. And thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, Chris Benson, I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time. I know you're super busy. We squeezed you in so we could get the announcement of Benson Fest more so than anything else. Um, and uh, obviously, we wanted to catch up with you. Um, I know you uh, are have just gotten back from uh, from Nashville area and uh, have an awful lot to do still. So we're going to wrap this one up a little bit earlier than we normally do, but not before we swing by Tony, and yes. she's got a Would You Rather for us. I do. Well, at this point of the show, Todd, is this little game we like to play called Would You Rather. Uh, this week's Would You Rather. Yes. I'm sure you alluded to it earlier about uh, uh, Juanes Ediciones problems. Yes. yes. And Perry Farrell and Dave Navarro butting heads. Yes. Now and the, Eric Avery getting a few swings in. Yes. And then, you know, so the story behind the story, apparently Perry and the fans could not hear Perry sing because the stage volume was too loud. Yeah. He was trashing his voice and he had, he was suffering from tinnitus on top of that. So. Yes. Stage I, I love a good case of tinnitus. Yes. It's <laughs> the best. Well, not warranting violence, by the way. No, I'm no. Just, we're just no, saying that. Never. Violence is not the answer. What went down. Yes. Well, Perry still, you know, he's he kind of said, yeah, we were doing okay money wise for a while, but I can't play with that Dave Navarro anymore. So he calls you up. You, the person, me, all of us. Okay. And he says, how would you like to be in uh, Jane's Addiction for the rest of the tour? There is no rest of the tour. Well, they're going to rebook stuff. Okay, they're going to rebook. Yes, all right. they get the canceled stuff. Got it. So, but because of his sensitive hearing. Yes. And the need to hear himself without straining his vocal cords. Yes. You have two options. Uh-huh. First option is to play direct. No amp, in ear only, something like a Strymon Iridium or a, a Boss IR200, something like that. Okay. You can have your pedal board, but okay. the only amplifier that goes direct into the board and then okay. back into your in ears. Um, or option two, you can play off stage with your full rig, as much cabinetry and everything <laughs> that you want. But the crowd won't see you except on the giant video screen. Okay. Which of those two would you rather? Okay. This, that's a silly one. It is uh, silly, we'll, but we'll go with it. Yes. Uh, well, Tony, why don't you kick us off? And then when Tony's done, uh, Chris is going to chime in with his. Um, I just, you know, I, I don't like the direct stuff, but not being on the stage just kind of 
destroys the whole idea of touring, you know? So I think I'm going to, I'm going, hmm, I'm going to go with option two anyhow. Really? I just, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't get, you know, without a, you know, you don't even have a, you know, a film monitor or anything like that. It's all in ear. And I, I just, certain things you, you can't make happen without having some feedback from the from from the amplifiers and such okay so but at least i'll be on the on the video screen that's true that'll be nice that's true that's and true. and that distance in case i do get a little loud will keep perry at bay that is true um and you can then you could actually sit off stage with your socks and tevas yeah socks and tevas <laughs> uh chris how about yourself what are you doing um, both of those sound like my personal version of hell. Um, but <laughs> I, and that's not, that's not to say I don't like Jane's addiction, but I just don't think I would want to do either, but it sounds a lot safer to be off stage. Um, because it, you know, the last guy got punched. So I would probably <laughs> opt to sit off stage with, uh, with my app and, uh, wearing like a, a a slanket or, or something. <laughs> okay. That'll work. Uh, Todd, what about you? I'm on stage for sure. I, I've been a James addiction fan since day one. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, regardless of whatever kerfuffle they just got into, it would have been awesome to see Dave play with them. You yeah. Know, in the last couple of shows of would have been incredible. Um, but I, I mean, if I had the chance to play Mountain with Eric Avery looking ac looking at him across the stage, oh my god, that would just be that would just be everything. I would love that. So, hey, uh, you know, call me up. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, so that was a fun one, Tony. Hey, if you think you can do better than Tony, yeah, you probably send can. us or would you rather's people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to thank a few people, and then we're going to let Chris go because he's got amps and pedals to build, and he has to build a carnival and a kissing booth. Ah, the kissing booth. Yes. And not the and dump And start though. planning for Ben's Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Well, Todd, right at this point of the show is a special time that we love to thank a bunch of people. And these people that we thank are our executive producer. Now, an executive producer makes this show possible. How do you become one? Quite easy. Head over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Check out a couple different levels in which you can participate. Become a friend, a sponsor, a hero of the podcast. Indeed. Each level comes with some very nice thank you gifts, gift, gifts, gifts, and opportunities to win special giveaways. Mm -hmm. The prize closet is bulging at the seams. Next week. That's right. But in addition to all that great stuff, there's one thing more. Todd, what would that be? You have your name. Bing. <laughs> your name read on the thing. I will translate for Todd once again. <laughs> So special thanks to these executive producers, John Sebastian, Trevor Ellenberg, Cameron Pampas, James Bell, Brett Hogarth, Gregory Randall, Don Kloss, Ralph Gottschalk from Wonderful Audio Technology, what? Rusty Sneeden, Vader and Pedals, John Halverson, Rick Calhoun, Trevor Gunberg, Elad Mizrahi, Richard Kendall, James White, Justin Jones, John Esterley from Rare Buzzles and Effects, Anthony Latherup, Stefan Lamb, Michael Senchuk, Ken Sayers, Darren Gregory, Tom Brazen, Eric Merrow, and Pluto. That's right. Thank you guys so very, very, very much. Oh, we but we thought it. there's more. Okay. We have a special group of executive producers. We call them our grand poobas. These are the creme de la creme, the top of the heap. They number ones, and they wear a fez upon their head whilst listening to the podcast. Indeed. So special, special, special thanks to these grand poobas. Anthony Gemolero, Billy Spitfire Unlimited, Bob Crouch, Brian Robison, Cody Foster, David Kaminga, David Tindall, Enrico Fernando, Fox Hill Studio, Hex Matos, James Pennington, John Williams, LSJ Music Company, Matt Hart, Michael Van Zant, Michio Murakishi, 
Moon Guitars, Paul Von Eppinger, Sam Jett, Steve Keys, Tyler Casey Rines, Zach Oswald from Brandon Wound Pickups, and Pedro Vesquez. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, thank you. Indeed. Thank you so very much to all of you helping to keep the ship moving along. Unlike the people in the terror. Oh my gosh, you guys got to watch that show on Netflix. Holy mackerel, it's so good. Mm. Uh, anyways, Chris, we need to say a ginormous thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your very busy schedule to t- talk to us knuckleheads and to share what's going on with Benson Fest 24. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me, fellas. Uh, now, if you are looking for information on that, I'm assuming they can go to bensonapps.com, right? I don't know if we have it on the website. Mm, a secret. Huh. <laughs> yeah, There's that like, might be a good place to uh, start. We might. It's I for think sure. someone said they were putting it on the website. The, if, if not, they're fired. Um, <laughs> there's posters. Yeah, there there's, are, there's like uh, posters in the form of Instagram posts hanging, yes. hanging around. Oh, dude. There is com backslash BensonFest. Ah, uh-huh. there you go. And it looks all like the, all the information is there. Well, so, that's cool. Now, uh, re- make sure that you get a bunch of uh, chapstick for the kissing booth uh, because uh, chances yeah. are... You're yes. gonna, you're gonna and warm that shoulder up to put Chris in the water. Yeah. Okay. Tony, where can people find the things that you're doing? You head over to pickguardian.com. Check out the things that I do. What do I do? I make custom pick cards for guitars. How do you get one? Shoot me an email. Let me know what you need, what you're trying to do. I'll take very good care of you. Yep. It's your opportunity to make your guitar more yours. Even, even, even more oh my yours. Oh gosh, you're fired. Can you give me, can you give me a cue card? I could, or yeah. you could just remember it. Okay. Uh, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram at guitar knobs. And I would love to hear from you. Please share us what uh, you're doing, what's going on, what you like about the show, what you hate about the show, even throw rocks at me, whatever. Rocks for Todd. Um, and, uh, yeah, lots more. We have some great things coming up for you guys. We're really, really excited. Uh, venturing out into, into new and different, uh, slightly different things too. Mm. So, uh, more to come on that. Chris, have a fantastic time at Benson Fest. Please make sure everybody you get out there if you're in anywhere near the vicinity and have some fun at Chris's expense. Okay. <laughs> uh, with that, have a fantastic guitar week, everybody, and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you do this to me every week? I don't do it to you. Yes, I do. Yes, you do. (laughs) (laughs) Surprise! We we, we just... (laughs) Uh, We stopped doing the podcast months ago. (laughs) We just call people at random. Yeah, it's all AI. All right. Oh, man. I I just remember there's a bottle of tequila here. Awesome. Okay. Torture session's over, Chris. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to record this uh, the episode. Yeah, that was just a warm-up. <laughs> we came to party. Doesn't oh, matter when the party okay. starts. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> like a bunch of coffee. And some oatmeal. I just lied about the oatmeal, honestly. I just had a bunch of coffee. You know, get the wiggles out. Put the donut on the bat. Take a bunch of ridiculously heavy swings. Mm-hmm. Take it off, <laughs> and then miss the ball. <laughs> that was my. That was what I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no one's caught on yet, except for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had coffee yeah. flavored oatmeal. <laughs> I stand to gain nothing by this lie. <laughs> and away we go. Well, that's it for these knobs please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also be sure to check out our Instagram at guitar knobs. Catch you next time.